Hello friends, in the previous video we have seen shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. This is your new chapter that is stresses in beams. In this chapter we have different syllabus topics. First one is theory of pure bending, assumptions for pure bending, structural formula for straight beams, moment of resistance, bending stress distribution diagram, section modulus for different sections, beams for uniform strength and one more important topic that is fleeched beam. See, in this chapter, we will see theory of pure bending. See, whenever a beam subjected to external transverse loading, the beam will be bent. The stresses induced in the beam to resist bending moment is called as bending stresses. Bending stresses changes linearly from compression to tension zone. It is denoted by sigma or F. Here the sigma is nothing but a bending stress is equal to M by Z. This M is the moment of resistance and Z is the sectional modulus. Bending is the major concept used in design of structural and machine components such as beam, girder, axle of wheels. See the important syllabus topic that is theory of pure bending. You can see the simple bending or you can see the pure bending. When the beam is subjected to a constant bending moment, no shear stresses are induced in the portion of a beam. It's called as simple bending or you can say the pure bending. Here you can see in this diagram A, B, C and D points are given at point B. W load is acting. At point C, W point load is acting. The distances are given that is A. Here is also A. At point A, that is vertical reaction, that is RA is equal to W. Here is also RD. RD is also equal to W. A simply supported beam ABCD subjected to equal point load W at equal distance A from each support. See, from A to B, distance is A. From D to C, distance is A. We are considering the beam is subjected to pure bending. Only shear force is neglected. You can see here. In shear force diagram, the shear force between portion B to C is zero as shown in figure. You can see here. Already we have seen SFD and BMD. You can see from B to C, shear force between B to C is zero. You can see here. In bending moment diagram, this is the bending moment diagram. The bending moment between BC portion is constant. You can see the straight line. A portion BC is said to be under pure bending. See if straight line is there, then the portion BC is said to be under pure bending. You can see this diagram. Nature of a bending stress. First case that is simply supported beam. You can see this one is the simply supported beam. This dotted line shows the neutral axis, neutral layer. Above the neutral layer, you can see the compressive stress. Below the neutral axis, that is a tensile stress. So here you can see the above, that is YC. And this one is the YT. W is acting here, you can see. This diagram is before loading. 
this is after loading this w so you can see below the neutral axis it's a compression and uh, below the neutral axis it's a tension and above the neutral axis that is compression so the diagram will be like that if beam does not load it the beam will not bend see if it is not loaded then it is not bent that is before loading whenever the beam is loaded the beam will be bent in such a way that it produced compressive stress in the upper layer you can see this the upper layer so compressive stress tensile stress in the lower layer lower layer so you can see the tensile stress in the lower layer beam is subjected to sagging bending movement see for simply supported beam beam is subjected to the sagging bending movement you can see this diagram this is compressive and this one is tensile see the another case that is cantilever beam see the diagram before loading you can see the condition of before loading here i am explaining only the theory required theory for this chapter before loading see the condition that is after loading cantilever condition one in is fixed see the condition here you can see above or you can see the upper layer of neutral axis that is tensile stress and below it's a compressive stress you can see here in this diagram above the neutral axis that is yt and below the neutral axis that is yc you can see here that is tensile and this one is compressive here we are considering right side compression and left side tensile this one is the baseline when the cantilever beam is loaded the beam will bend in such a way that it produces tensile stress in upper layer and compressive stress in lower layer you can see in this diagram beam is subjected to hogging bending movement if cantilever is there then beam is subjected to the hogging bending movement what is mean by neutral layer and neutral axis in the beam a layer which does not change its original length even after bending is called as neutral layer the bending stress is always zero at the neutral layer neutral axis is the line of intersection of the neutral layer with any normal section of the beam it will be proved that the neutral axis of the beam passes through the centroid of the section see the next and very important topic assumptions made in theory of bending or you can see the assumptions for pure bending assumptions made in theory of bending see this question is continuously repeated december 8 10 may 11 december 12 may 15 december 15 may 16 this is the very important and repeated question question is state assumptions made in simple bending the following are the assumptions made in theory of bending first the material of beam is homogeneous and isotropic isotropic means having the properties same in all directions the second the beam is straight before loading next the beam is of uniform cross section throughout its length next transverse section which are plain before loading remain plain even after loading next the material is elastic and hooke's law is applicable next the effect of shear is neglected therefore the analysis is made for pure bending next the modulus of elasticity that is young's modulus e had same value in tension 
and compression each layer is free to expand or contract having no influence in the neighboring layer for their extension and contraction next the beam is initially straight and all longitudinal filaments bend into circular arcs with a common center of curvature see this is a very important topic that is assumptions made in simple bending the material is homogeneous and isotropic beam is straight before loading the beam is uniform cross section throughout its length transverse sections which are plain before loading remain plain even after loading material is in elastic and hooks law is applicable shear the effect of shear is neglected modulus of elasticity is same for tension as well as compression each layer is free to expand and contract having no influence in neighboring layer for their extension and contraction the beam is initially straight and all longitudinal filament bend into circular arcs with common center of curvature so next flexural formula for a straight beam so continuously repeated question derivation of flexural formula for pure bending you can see the continuously repeated question question is prove that m by i is equal to f by y is equal to e by r instead of f sometimes they are using sigma c sigma by y is equal to m by i is equal to e by r you can see the m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by r derived flexural formula the university question see this is the derivation you can see this diagram very clear clearly this is for straight beams flexural formula for pure bending see before loading this is straight beam this one is a point this one is b c and d see the distance is given that is dx see the neutral axis ef points are there e and f this one is g and h this is a neutral layer ef so before bending you can see this diagram point o is given condition is after bending see again the point instead of a there is a dash b dash c dash d dash e dash and f dash g dash and h dash and you can see the neutral layer also now you can see this one is a theta this one is a r you can see r that is radial distance radius of curvature not radial distance radius of curvature it is very important and this distance is y you can see g dash and h dash here you can see the distance y g and h layer is there fiber is there that is g h the perpendicular distance between g h and e f that is y consider any two normal sections ab and cd of the beam for small length dx apart as shown in figure that already i shown you that is ab and cd and the distance between them that is dx after the application of transverse loading on the beam the beam will bend a dash b dash c dash and d dash as shown in figure you can see here a dash b dash c dash and d dash a dash b dash and c dash and d dash intersects at point o you can see here from this to this that is r that is radius of curvature 
and theta is the subtended angle at O. You can see this theta. Now consider a layer GH at a distance Y from neutral axis that already I explained you. This distance is Y. Now how we can derive the formula that is M by I is equal to sigma B by Y is equal to E by R. We know the formula for strain. Strain is equal to change in length upon original length. So for strain in layer GH due to bending. So what will be the change in length? After bending the dimensions are G dash and H dash. So G dash H dash minus previous dimension that is GH. So G dash H dash minus GH you will get change in length for layer GH due to bending. The original length that is GH. Here you can see that before loading GH is equal to EF. So GH is replaced by EF. So E is equal to G dash H dash minus EF upon EF. First concept that is strain. The next length of arc. We know the formula for length of arc is equal to subtended angle into radius. So original length of E dash and F dash is equal to EF. See here you can see the distance E dash F dash. And here you can see EF. The axis is neutral so there will not be any change. So E dash F dash is equal to EF. So is equal to subtended angle that is theta and radius r. So EF is equal to r theta according to the length of r. Now length of layer G dash H dash is equal to r theta. So here r plus y theta. So the change in length is equal to G dash H dash minus GH that is R plus Y in bracket R plus Y into theta minus R theta. You can see. So delta L is equal to Y theta. Delta L is equal to Y theta. You can see this diagram very well. For G dash H dash r plus y this is a total distance so in bracket r plus y into theta so change in length is equal to here plus r theta minus r theta will get cancelled you will get change in length is equal to y theta so strain is equal to y theta upon r theta. Theta theta will get cancelled. You will get E is equal to Y by R. That is equation number 1. And we know that the definition of modulus of elasticity Young's modulus is equal to stress upon strain. So E is equal to sigma upon capital E. Stress upon Young's modulus. So this is equation 2. After equating 1 and 2 you will get sigma upon e is equal to y by r. So here you can take y here. You can change the position of Young's modulus. So sigma by y is equal to e by r. So sigma y sigma upon y is equal to e by r. That is third equation. And you can see this diagram. This is the Elemental area dA. This is a y distance from neutral axis. Since E and R are the constant, the stress is directly proportional to the distance from neutral axis. Now consider cross section of the beam. Consider an elemental strip at y from neutral axis and area of strip that is dA. 
Now we know that force is equal to stress into area. So force on the strip is equal to stress on strip into area of strip. So DF is equal to stress that is sigma into DA. And we know that sigma is nothing but E by R into Y. So DF is equal to E by R into Y into DA. This is the force. Moment of this force about neutral axis. That is DM is equal to DF into Y. So DF that is force on strip is equal to E bar R into Y into DA. E by R into Y into DA into Y. So here y into y that is y square. So dm is equal to e by r is into y square da. This is the moment of this force about neutral axis. The total moment of whole section about neutral axis m is equal to e by r. We know that integration of y square da. This is the total moment of the whole section about neutral axis. We know that integration of y square dA is nothing but moment of inertia. So m is equal to e by r into i. So m by i is equal to e by r that is equation number 4. After equating equation number 3 that is sigma by y is equal to e by r so you will get the final flexural formula m by i is equal to sigma b by y is equal to e by r. See this is a very important, this is known as bending formula or you can say the flexural formula. This is a very very important point. First here you have to consider change in length that is formula of strain then length of arc, formula is subtended angle into theta, then modulus of elasticity, then you have to equate the equations, then you have to consider force, then moment, after that you will get the formula m by i is equal to sigma b by y is equal to e by r. It's a very, very important structural formula. See the condition of simple bending. The bending formula is applicable to a member which is subjected to a pure bending only. Bending formula is applicable to a member which is subjected to pure bending only. The beam should be free from shear force. But in actual practice, the member is subjected to both shear force and bending moment at every section. But shear force is zero at the section where the bending moment is maximum. Hence, the condition of simple bending is subjected to be satisfied at this section. The stresses produced by maximum bending moment by flexural formula gives satisfactory result to design beams and structures. See one more important syllabus topic that is section modulus for different sections. Sectional modulus is the ratio of moment of inertia of the beam section about neutral axis to the distance of extreme fiber from neutral axis. It is denoted by Z. So SI unit of sectional modulus is mm cube or centimeter cube or meter cube. Z is equal to I upon Y. I is the moment of inertia. Y is the extreme fiber distance from neutral axis. Here you can see the formulas for IXX and IYY. Just here, revision of moment of inertia for uh, different shapes. You can see the Ixx for rectangle that is BD cube by 12, IYY that is DB cube by 12, for square Ixx is A raised to 4 by 12, IYY A raised to 4 by 12, 
here you can say the isoscale triangle that is vh cube by 36 that is ixx iyy is hb cube by 48 you can see the diagram h is given the base is given for right angle triangle this one is the base this one is height x and y axis are given ixx is equal to bh cube by 36 and iyy that is hb cube by 36 already we have completed this uh, part in movement of inertia chapter this is the shape circle or circle ixx is pi by 64 into d raised to 4 iyy is equal to pi by 64 into d raised to 4 for a semicircle the formula is ixx is equal to 0.11 r raised to 4 and iyy is equal to pi by 8 into r raised to 4 or pi by 128 into d raised to 4 for the quarter circle the formula is ixx that is 0.55 into r raised to 4 and iyy is again 0 0.055 r raised to 4 so the different shapes are given One more important concept that is movement of resistance. You can see the compression and tension. You can see right side that is compression, left side that is tension. This one is the baseline and the neutral axis is given. The couple which produced tensile stress on the tensile zone and compressive stress on compressive zone of the beam to resist the bending moment due to external loading is called as moment of resistance and it is denoted by MR. The moment of resistance is always opposite to the bending moment. When the bending moment is greater than moment of resistance, the member will fail. For equilibrium condition, bending moment is always equal to the bending uh, moment of resistance that is m by i is equal to sigma by y bending so m is equal to sigma by y into i so m is equal to i by y is nothing but z so m is equal to sigma into z that is very important formula so it is also defined as the product of sectional modulus and allowable bending stress is nothing but moment of resistance. That is very, very important formula. M is equal to sigma into Z. See, one more chart, important chart is given. Just showing you the formulas. Already you know how to calculate maximum shear force and maximum bending moment. Just chart is given, you can refer this chart while solving the problem. The first type of beam that is simply supported beam with point load at mid span. You can see the bending moment diagram here. Here the maximum shear force S is equal to capital W by 2. Here the maximum bending moment is equal to W L by 4. The next condition simply supported with uniformly distributed on entire span. You can see the UDL maximum shear force will be W into L by 2 and maximum bending moment is W L square by 8. Simply supported beam with point load not at center means you can see here this one is A distance this one is B. The previous case was at center but here there is no The point load not at center. So SA is equal to W into B by L and SB is equal to W into A upon L and the maximum bending moment is equal to W into A into B upon L. The length is given point A and B the distances are given. Now next condition simply supported beam with uniformly varying load See the condition L is given, W is given, A and B beam is given. So SA is equal to WL by 6, SB is equal to WL by 3. 
and bending maximum bending moment is equal to w l square upon 9 under root of 3 so similarly for simply supported beam with maximum uniformly varying load at mid span and zero at sub core see if the condition is like that then sa is equal to sb is equal to wl by 4 is equal to for maximum bending moment the formula is wl square by 12 the cantilever case is given then s is equal to w and maximum bending moment is equal to w into l you can find out this formula by using our normal method which we which we are using for sfd and bmd cantilever with udl of entire span c there is a udl for entire span then s is equal to w into l and the maximum bending moment is equal to w l square by 2 if cantilever with uniformly varying load if the condition is like that then s is equal to w l by 2 and m max is equal to w l square by 6 so one more important syllabus topic that is beam for uniform strength so you can see the explain beam of uniform strength c beam provided for general construction is of uniform cross section throughout their length when a beam of uniform cross section subjected to loading there is a variation in bending moment for, from section to section along the length whereas the moment of resistance of such a beams are constant such a beams are not economical the stress in extreme outer fiber also vary from section to section along their length the extreme fiber can be loaded to the maximum capacity of permissible stress but they are loaded to less capacity hence the beam of uniform cross section is the waste of materials the beam are designed in such a way that the extreme fibers are loaded to the maximum permissible stress by varying the cross section such a beam is known as uni as beam of uniform strain so again here i am repeating the beam are designed in such a way that the extreme fibers are loaded to the maximum permissible stress by varying the cross section such a beam is known as beam of uniform strength beam of uniform strength has same maximum bending stress all along the length this can be achieved by first condition beam of uniform width and another condition that is beam of uniform depth so here i explained you the theory entire theory related to the stresses in beams we have the different numericals we will see in the next video different numericals but for solving the problems the important chapter that is moment of inertia by using the formula of ixx and iyy and by using flexural formula that is m by i is equal to sigma b by y is equal to e by r we can solve the problem of stresses in beams thank you thank you very much